Yes, we are live now. I think we are live. Just let me check again. Yes. Lot of people have joined already us on YouTube. Hello, Guru Prasad. Hello, Dr. Nadmi. Hey, Savan. Hey, Pedro. Thank you for joining us. We'll be starting by 3 p.m. sharp. Hey everybody, nice to see you all. Hi, Pete. Of course, Dr. Nadmi, you can uh, see the webinar. This will be recorded uh, over YouTube, so you can have the reference of this webinar. Our experts' insights will mean a lot, so you can definitely record this, like uh, have a recording of this webinar over YouTube. Hello, Ikta ma'am. Hey, Asha. So we have people from Portugal, Goa, India, as in Nigeria, South Africa. Nice to see you all at this platform. Yes, there will be definitely an attendance certificate for all of you. So we'll give the certificate after your feedback. So we'll uh, tell you each and everything regarding this. Uh, we'll start by within two minutes, I suppose. Hey, Fernandez. We'll be starting by 3 p.m. sharp, ma'am. Thank you for asking. Hey, Priya. Hey, Majood. It will start by 3 p.m. As I said, uh, Dr. Nadmi, we'll be starting by 3 p.m. sharp. Thank you for your patience. Hey, Claudio. So this webinar will be uh, till four, uh, like one hour, one hour, uh, 30 minutes or so. So we appreciate your presence and patience. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone in India. <clears throat> People are saying hello to all our experts. They are so excited to have your yeah, point of views on the next generation of school enhancing classrooms with coding AI and robotics. So yes, 
they are saying good afternoon, good evening, hello to all our experts, to all our delegates. They are so excited to have an interaction over YouTube comments. I think it's high time. We can start now. So, yeah. Good day and a very warm welcome to everyone. Thank you for joining us today for the most awaited webinar. I am Shruti Khare from Stempedia, your today's host for this webinar. Today's webinar is all about next generation schools enhancing classrooms with coding, AI, and robotics, on which we'll have and inspirational insights for our schools, educators, and students from the experts who have joined us. Let's look at our agenda. We'll have an introductory address from our ex to our experts, for our experts, followed by the keynotes from Dr. Timo on Finland, coding AI and robotics, past, present, future, and from Mr. Pankaj on enhancing classrooms with coding, AI, and robotics. Moving further, we all will have an opportunity to know the insights from our delegates on next generation school enhancing classrooms with coding, AI, and robotics. Afterwards, we'll have the session on how STEMpedia is helping the schools to develop an AI and robotics learning ecosystem with fun and engaging learning activities. Last but not the least, our students, educators, and parents will also be able to ask their queries on YouTube by posting it in comment section. You have to keep this in mind. You can ask your queries to us at any time on YouTube comments, and we'll answer them by end of the session, by last at the last of the session. So uh, I hope you will be posting your queries and you all are supposed to share your feedback with us. So feedback link is already mentioned in the YouTube description. So you can take, uh, you can take that link in the reference and you can share your feedback with us simultaneously. After getting your feedback, we will share these certificates as well with you all. So I know all of you are excited and so are we. Then, without getting a further delay, I would like to take a moment to introduce you all to our today's esteemed delegates. Firstly, let me introduce you to Dr. Timo Lenanen, an Associate Professor of New Media Design and Learning at the Aalto University School of Arts, Design and Architecture in Finland. Dr. Timo holds over two decades of experience in the field of research and development of web-based learning. Dr. Timu conduct, conducts research, design, and publishes in different forums. He has received a number of international awards from his research and design work. Thank you so much, Dr. Timu, to join us. Now, let's meet our next expert, Ms. Charlene Master Teresa, who is a UAE coding ambassador a school innovation leader and a tech educator. She is a Metaverse Hackmaster winner and an AI enthusiast. Now let me introduce you to our next panelist who is mentoring students in giving shape to their ideas using scientific principles and incorporating emerging technology wherever needed. Mr. Ivan Dorji Lapcha, Vice Principal and STEM Head at Paljor Namgyal Girls School. Then I would like you to meet Ms. Ani Kumar, who is the HOD CSC at Vikas Public School, National ICT Awardee 2019. She is a passionate Adobe creative and AI educator. Last but not the least, our very own Mr. Pankaj Kumar Verma one of the co-founders who envisioned the field of robotics and AI in the form of Quarky and Pictoblogs and a chief technical officer at Stempedia. A hearty thank welcome to all of you and a huge thank you for gracing this event with your presence. Thank you, Shruti. And thank you to all the panelists for coming uh, for this uh, uh, discussion and for this talk.
Thank you so much. Thank you to all the panelists, to all our experts. Moving further, I would like to request Dr. Timu to share his keynote address on Finland coding AI and robotics, past, present, future. Over to you, Dr. Timu. Thank you, Shruti, and thank you, Pankai, for the invitation. It's a, it's a great honor to, to have the opportunity to work with you, you people. I'm, I'm uh, very pleased about the opportunity to to work with the STEMpedia and and our collaboration uh, uh, looks like very promising in 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 the coming months and coming years. Um, maybe I could start. I do you know I'm a professor, so five minutes sounds like a really short time for me. When you let a professor to talk, they keep on talking and talking, but uh, I, I try to keep it brief. Uh, maybe starting just a. a three things which you can't find uh, with the internet search about me, uh, three facts. I was born in a small town in Finland called Nokia, which is better known from something else than being a small town in Finland. Uh, another fact, I grew up in Dar es Salaam in Tanzania, where my father used to work. And, and the third fact you can't find by searching, uh, I'm a father of two uh, girls um, and 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 very happy to be a father father uh, and 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 helping them to to go forward in their life. But then to the to the topic today, I, I thought to talk a bit of the how the coding AI and robotics is is approached or being approached in in Finland in the last 10, 15 years. Uh, uh, first of course the coding being the thing, but more and more we discuss about the AI and and robotics being almost like a way of, of getting into the coding and, and AI to have hands-on activities by, by children building things. But um, you know the past is, is, is a known, uh, the present is uncertain and the future is unknown. Uh, uh, and, and I will go through very briefly where we are at the moment and, and probably not getting to the future that much at all. But uh, I, I understand that Finland is a small country, so I, I also want to tell very quick, uh, give you a very quick lesson to the history of Finland. And I think you can remember, if you remember 711, you get the whole picture of the history of Finland. We used to be part of the Swedish empire for 700 years. We were about 100 years autonomic part of the Russian empire under the Tsar. And we've been about 100 years now independent. And you can see this development in the Finnish society quite a lot. There's a lot of influence of the Swedish uh, uh, way of, of approaching the world, but we have a certain Slavic mentality as well. And, and as an independent country, what is maybe the most, uh, uh, or, or one thing which, which we are known is the, is the gender uh, equality. 60% of the university students are female. And 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 we have in the parliament fifty percent of the of the of the members of parliament are female, and and it looks like the country is run these days by by women, which is great. So similar way, the education in Finland, in very big picture, you could say that the University of Helsinki was found during the Swedish era. Compulsory school was part of the national movement when the idea of of us being an independent country came came to the picture and then, then the comprehensive school is from the 1970s, which is still pretty much more or less the same. We have a public school system, which is, is compulsory for, for all, the, all the children in Finland. So the uncertain present, uh, I, I picked up just the educational system picture from Finland and, and maybe few uh, unique things uh, if compared internationally is that we don't have dead ends at all. So regardless which path you take, you go to the vocational education or you go to the, to the, to the university education, there's always a way to continue in a higher level. Uh, also, the, the, the certificates you get are, are unified in a such a way that, that you can continue with your, with your studies. The red line in, in there is the, the, the line which is the compulsory school. So everybody will 
we'll we'll have 12 years now education uh, from the basic education to the to the so-called uh, upper secondary school or then then the last three years in the vocational education. Uh, what is also quite unique is that we don't have national uh, exams except in the very end of the 12 years. That's when we must do the selection to the to the two different paths, which are not dead ends, but but selection is done. And, and that's the only point when we do national uh, uh, exams, which is this matriculation examination. Um, the curriculum uh, is renewed nationally uh, every 15, 20 years. And the latest one, uh, which came in, in power 2016, uh, started quite strongly from the, from the developing of the school culture. And, and those are the values or the basis what we try to build every single school in Finland. There's the well-being and safety in daily life, uh, interaction and aware style working approach, cultural diversity and language awareness, participation and democratic action, equity and equality, environmental responsibility and sustainable future orientation. So these are the guidelines for every single school in Finland. Uh, they should bring their learning community, their they school culture. If we go then more to the, to the unique aspects of the Finnish curriculum, we have something we call transversal competencies. We look for knowledge and skills, attitudes and values in here. We do have school subjects which are under there, but then we have these uh, competencies or skills which uh, are integrated through the older subjects. And now we got to the interest of the coding AI and robotics, which has been developed, that if you start to look those skills or competencies, you can actually find out that there's the ICT competencies, there's the multiliteracy, which is super, super important, uh, media literacy, able to read the, the messages, uh, even able to understand the algorithms, how do they operate in the modern world, also thinking and learning to, to, to learn, working life competencies and entrepreneurship, participation, involvement, and building a sustainable future, and cultural competencies, interaction and self-expression, which you can do with coding, AI, and robotics. And this seems to be super interesting that all these transversal competencies can be developed with a tools and working with coding, AI, and robotics. And this being taking off quite well in the Finnish schools. Uh, uh, and, and the idea is that it's not its own subject. It's something which is practiced in number of subjects and doing projects together on integrating different subjects into the projects, projects uh, uh, in, in, in the school environment. I think I will finish here and, and, and turn over for the next speaker. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Thank you very much for enlightening us with your address, Dr. Timu. That was really thought-provoking thought and gives us an amazing perspective on Finland coding AI and robotics past, present, future. Thank you very much. Now I would like to call our very own Mr. Pankaj for sharing his insights on enhancing classrooms with AI coding and robotics to address our schools, educators, and students. Over to you, Mr. Pankaj. Uh, thank you, Shruti, and uh, thank you, Dr. Timu, for providing a very uh, useful insight uh, about the Finnish uh, curriculum. Uh, and um, like we take Finnish curriculum as one of the, uh, uh, like I would say, successful pilots of uh, changing the curriculum according to the new uh, age requirement as well. So, so that's that was very insightful uh, from that perspective as well. So I would uh, take some time and talk about the importance of uh, skill education, especially in coding AI and robotics, uh, because coding AI and robotics is still very early, uh, in a very early stage in uh, the school education as well. All of us would acknowledge that uh, we are being surrounded by AI now. So, so just to take your example, like we can uh, see uh, when we are using the Google Maps to go to a location, it uses its AI capabilities to tell us the shortest route. Uh, and you would have observed that uh, it also tell us if there is any roadblock or is there any 
real time obstruction that uh, that are there on the route and uh, it uh, makes you informed about those uh, as well this is a very powerful example to show you how ai enabled technology is actually impacting our life similarly uh, ai can be seen in other application as well like uh, face recognition on your smartphone or even the recommendation system on your shopping app or even uh, youtube and uh, uh, just for uh, the fun like uh, you would have seen that we have even turned a speaker into a smart device uh, which we call as at as alexa and it actually enhances the way we play a song or even ask a question in the internet as well uh, next slide please so uh, by 2030 um, like ai is projected to have a worldwide 15.7 trillion dollars in economic value which is uh, massive and it will actually lead to a lot of uh, jobs and opportunities in the field of uh, technology and uh, ai is going to have a very big potential in order to revolutionize how people interact with technology automate their monday tasks and improve decision making uh, approach as well so you can relate to this with chat gtp actually so it has uh, like enabled users to communicate with machines making it easier for people to ask for help or even get information from the computer as well and for the fun fact like chat gtp has also like crossed 1 million users within 5 days of its launch and this is just the big name and uh, the the kind of approach uh, or the kind of impact ai is going to have on all of our life is is very massive and we have to actually prepare our kids for the future as well so that is that is where uh, like it becomes important that we take actions for uh, in order to make the students ready for the future where ai coding and even the robotics is going to be a very important factors uh, in their life so just to uh, talk about um, just to talk about few uh, like why these are the things which uh, get essential for the students so by learning this technology students uh, actually develop essential 21st century skills like coding uh, like creative thinking problem solving and innovation students also get exposure to coding with fun and engaging methods and uh, I, as we all of uh, as we all know coding is actually one of the very important uh, building block of ai and robotics so if you don't know coding you uh, like it's very hard to build any ai or robotics application as well and as per world economic forum ai is going to create up to 58 million jobs in the next 10 years which will be a, uh, like a massive opportunity for the young people so uh, now uh, talking about how coding AI and robotics is getting into the school uh, education. So I would just take the example of uh, India and uh, like in India now uh, the, the coding AI and robotics is now being introduced into the school curriculum by various boards and government bodies as well. In India, we have the national education policy uh, 2020 coming. Uh, and uh, the effect of uh, national education policy has been like CBSE and ICSE boards, which are massive in India, have introduced uh, coding AI and robotics as skill subjects from class six to 12. So uh, now the initiative is going from government to the school education as well. And the whole objective is to make technology learning more hands-on rather than the traditional rote learning. So just to give you an example, if I want to make a student learn about uh, face detection, so we cannot teach them the face detection with theory part or like just by theory. We have to make the students create a face filter or create a face emotion detector or some projects so that they are able to understand and do the projects uh, as well. So, so that's the approach we uh, uh, we uh, are like we should take in uh, implementation of this skill subjects and this subjects also uh, encourages logical thinking innovation while teaching important life skills like communication, cooperation, teamwork, and resilience as well. Uh, and this is actually a very great thing. Like I remember when I was in school uh, in Kendra Vidyalas, uh, which is the government schools uh, in India. So, so we had a very little exposure to these uh, opportunities. Even at IIT Kanpur, I have seen many of my peers getting scared of working with code only because they have created a very big entry barrier for them. So introducing coding AI and robotics in school curriculum would, uh, would provide the much needed exposure to the students and make the entry barrier small for them as well. 
but there are a lot of challenges to implement this technology education in school environment, which we will be addressing during the discussions with our panelists as well. So that's all from my side. Shruti, you can take it over. Thank you so much, Pankaj, for sharing your insights. You have already set the context behind this webinar with your thoughts. And your thoughts and approach, I would definitely believe that this will cater to our educators and students in the area of AI coding and robotics. So moving towards the most awaited segment of this webinar, our panelist discussion on enhancing classrooms with coding AI and robotics, for which all our audience were waiting from so long. We have a lot of questions on YouTube, as we promised that we will take all the questions from all the participants at last. So we'll take them shortly. But until then, you can post your comment, post your queries on, in the comment section on YouTube. We'll take all the questions at last of this webinar. So to start with, I would like to ask my first question to Ms. Charlene. Ms. Charlene, why is it crucial for the students to learn and explore technologies like AI, coding, and robotics from a young age? All right. Hi. Uh, thank you for that. Uh great question uh as what uh actually mr Pan pankaj have highlighted right so why it's important to learn this at a young age it's because if uh if you go the future of job market is going to be in the digital uh aspect right so if you will be only learning that at, like when you go to your bachelor's or at, at a certain level your foundation of these uh, languages will not be as good as when you learned it when you are young. It's like it's like reading. Coding is like re reading and writing, right? So, and it's like the in the next uh, in 2030 only, uh, it's gonna create or add 15.7 uh, trillion in the uh, global economy. And one important thing also about coding, AI, and robotics is how it teaches you uh, computational thinking which is really very important because you learn that in uh, algorithm and logic, right? So, and this thinking is very important when we solve real real world problems. And that's how, that's how it is. We are here to solve real world problems. So if you are having this thinking pattern at a young age, it will be built into you and it will be easier for you to navigate uh, in your, in your, in your uh, careers in the future and, uh, as we move forward in this digital age. So, yeah. Very well said, Ms. Charlene, ma'am. So, yeah, uh, the foundation learning is literally very important. And I think our young minds uh, get the gist that, yes, this uh, coding AI and robotics learning is very important at the foundation stage. I would request, Mr. Ivan, sir, you would like to add anything to it, whatever the Charlene, ma'am, shared. Yes, pretty much uh, ma'am has told uh, uh, why it is very necessary. Uh, one thing I would like to add to is uh, at a young age, the students must be at least given the exposure. And then along with uh, the tech education, uh, they must be exposed to many other uh, co-curricular activities. So because uh, if we do not give them the exposure, they will never have uh, the choice. And later on in life, if they suddenly realize that, oh, I love this thing, then it would be too late for them to catch up with others who have already got some basic skills. That's why uh, early exposure is, is uh, very, very crucial. Yeah. And I think, I believe that uh, young minds are uh, catchy uh, in comparison to the you know older minds. So, so yeah, of course. The concepts uh, grasping thing is literally uh, quite uh, larger in comparison to the uh, youth. So yes. So uh, Ani ma'am, my next question is to you as you are uh, very much uh, known with the uh, CBSC and ICSC curriculum and you are very familiar with it. So as NEP 2020 and educational boards like uh, CBSC and ICSC and many others, are focusing on AI coding and robotics, like tech education related subjects. How can a school introduce these subjects in their school curriculum? 
Any thoughts on this, ma'am? Uh, thanks, Ruti, for this question. Actually, uh, being a HOD in my school, and it is like uh, it is likely said that uh, we always think that catch them hold when they are young. It is like uh, uh, we need to, if we want some result to uh, to get in the future, it is probably that we need to uh, start when they are too young. So it's uh, it's a very good practice if you are going to start it in the uh, by entering into the curriculum. Now, if we are using it, if we if we start the like in the form of clubs, if you are starting like robotics club, coding clubs, if you start in the school, uh, and that can also help the students to uh, get this knowledge of robotics and AI. And uh, further, uh, if it is possible that it can be integrated into the curriculum because uh, in India we have in CBSE board we have subjects already allocated schools can uh, do with that those uh, schools can take up those subjects for teaching and uh, one thing is that teachers could be trained for teaching these subjects because when we were young there was no such subjects like AI and all we need to be trained all teachers need to be trained like workshops could be conducted expert panels could be called experts from the industry they could be called for uh, integrating with the students and and field trips could be uh, could be conducted in the school so that they can directly visit the industry, uh, industry where actually robotics and AI, how it is helping to develop the products and how it is actually being used. If in real sense they are able to see it, then it, it actually helps to uh, tinker those ideas and uh, just foster the creativity in the kids. So I feel if, and also one more thing, if if you want to teach anything not like a subject as a tool then it should be integrated with other subjects also like for example if suppose science needs to be taught and if the children are going to develop some uh, robot that is that works on the principle of some organ then but naturally those uh, science teachers can use the robotics for teaching uh, uh, this uh, robotics now it is like integrating if these uh, things can be integrated in other subjects not only in computer science then it would actually help the students to work for the future and solve the real world problems. Absolutely. Totally aligning with your thoughts, ma'am. Thank you so much for sharing it. So we are getting a lot of questions on YouTube. We'll take all the questions at the last of the session as we promised. I request all our audience to share your feedback meanwhile. Uh, Dr. Timu, uh, I would like to know your thought also on the same, how Finland ed education is integrating this, these curriculum thank you I, I i i agree with everything what what being said except that that uh that in the finnish educational thinking uh we don't really and and of course we do but but our starting point is not the the work life or the or the work skills we we want to emphasize of of becoming humans and and responsible citizens and that doesn't mean that the AI or the or the algorithms would not be important in that. Actually, they are just as important as, as literacy. That to be a responsible and a good citizen, you must understand these topics as well. What is the AI doing for our social life? What is it doing for politics? What is it doing for democracy? What what are the risks and challenges related to human rights and 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 good life for for all? And, and those topics are, are super important. Uh, the Finnish way is that 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 uh, we've been trying to integrate these and and try and and are working on that to to all the study subjects. It can be integrated even to the sports. And and with with this approach of more societal approach, I, I think it's also a bit of like a as a small nation, you must be self sustainable in many ways. Uh, uh, we can't rely on 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 others than ourselves. So so similar way as we teach handicraft uh, uh, for people able to uh, make their own clothes, which we actually teach in the in the primary schools. Uh, coding is important that that we can do our own <laughs> computer systems and our own AI, and 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 that then we don't rely on on others in that as a, as a nation. And that that is like the the backbone of of having a fair and 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 justice and and equality in the society. So I, I think we are actually talking super super important topic from the broad societal point of view uh, to bring 
AI and coding and robotics to, to every school for every student. And I fully agree that the teacher training is, is there to key to, to, to make, make it happening. Of course, of course. Thank you so much, Thibu, Dr. Thibu, for sharing your thoughts. And uh, of course, uh, this is uh, the backbone. This is as similar as the literacy, whatever you said. So yeah, you have correctly mentioned it. And uh, I hope our audience will also get a gist from it. My next question is to Mr. Ivan. Uh, what are the primary challenges uh, faced by these schools in implementing these uh, skills, AI coding and robotics in their curriculum and how to overcome these challenges? Uh, uh, there are many uh, to say. Uh, I think the most important of them all is uh, the mindset uh, and the inertia of uh, of will of of uh, trying to do things in the traditional way. So we must come out of this inertia to begin with, and we must accept that um, the education is not not just changing; it has changed. And the schools, institutions, uh, teachers, uh, parents, they must come out of uh, their traditional uh, thought, uh, the traditional pathway of learning, and then they must adopt to this change. That's, I think, the number one challenge. We, we, we should create enough uh, awareness uh, to, to all the stakeholders and then make them aware um, that things have changed. And if we continue doing things in the tra traditional way, uh, we might be lagging, lagging behind, uh, not as uh, a school, but, but as, a, as, as a country. And also, the other challenge is uh, lack of uh, experts, uh, especially if you want to really uh, uh, introduce these subjects as, as a main subject where the students uh, are seriously thinking about developing a career in these uh, fields. Uh, I think we need uh, good teachers, trained teachers, and also enthusiastic teachers uh, willing to uh, adopt this change and willing to acquire the skills by themselves. Uh, thirdly, I think the infrastructure. Uh, personally, I have uh, faced this problem that uh, to be beginning is uh, to begin the topics is is not a challenge. But then as we start developing uh, on these topics, we, we, we try to dive deep, we, we want to build serious projects, then uh, one uh, problem is uh, not enough laptops and many students uh, not being able to adopt laptops. Uh, as a matter of fact, I think uh, in my school, hardly 15% of the students um, have their own personal laptops. Uh, so, so I don't know how we will overcome this problem, but we need enough uh, computing systems in our schools. Uh, also, uh, if we want to uh, introduce uh, like high-end technologies like XR, AR, VR, uh, then again, the whole computing uh, lab, computer labs must be revamped because uh, traditional PCs may not be sufficient. So um, these are the three, in my opinion, uh, the mindset uh, and the lack of experts and uh, enough laptops must be there. I think these are the existing challenges. Very well highlighted, Mr. Ivan, uh, all the challenges because they are literally existing from so long back until now. And it will take time uh, to you know, convert these challenges into strength. But yes, we'll go. We'll definitely reach to that level. Yeah. I think. Uh, yes. Sorry yes. to interrupt. Uh, 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 what I have done is uh, I have acquired some old PCs, old laptops, which do not support Windows 11 and Windows 10, and I have uh, rather installed Linux systems over there. So that is one way in which I am overcoming this lack of laptop problem. Wow. wow. What a thoughtful. May, may I comment? May yeah, I yeah, no, comment please. on that? Thank you, Ivan, to raise up the infrastructure. It, it's it's super important, and and I can't help to tell that Linux comes from Finland, <laughs> and, oh. and, and 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 also to to mention that Android phones are actually Linux devices, and and 
and that has made a big change. And, and I, I really appreciate also what the STEMpedia is doing, that they their solutions work with the Android phones. Of course, there's also the network connectivity is then needed. So, so, so the mobile infrastructure is needed, needed to, to cover, cover the schools and, and the children as well. But I think the prices of the of the Android phones or the tablets is going down, and, and they actually are very powerful computers these days. So there is a hope in that too. And 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 bring your own device is is a good approach for schools to to rely partly on the families and and the children's own devices. Thank you so much, Dr. Timu. Uh, we as a STEMpedia are really obliged uh, to have the feedback from you. Uh, Mr. Pankaj, you would like to add anything uh, to it? I think uh, most of the points were already added by Ivan sir and Dr. Timo as well. Um, I, I would just uh, uh, really like to appreciate, like we we have been uh, knowing Ivan sir for more than four years now, uh, and uh, like the the PNG school uh, was uh, like they took an initiative which was very uh, powerful. So in order to introduce. Uh, coding as a full-fledged, uh, like as a, taking that initiative into the school, they have uh, like taught each and every teacher on how to do the basics of coding programming and those parts. So, so that has been very uh, greatly executed as well. And, uh, and that was an initiative that was taken more than like pre-pandemic. So, so that was too early, like very early, uh, even I think before uh, the national education policy came as well. 2017, uh, when, uh, January. Yeah. Yes, yes. And uh, uh, so uh, just to add a few, uh, like one of the major concerns that comes is the computational device that was rightly pointed out. So, so one of the out um, uh, challenges. So, like in order to solve this challenge, what we were uh, like, what we as Tempedia are doing is more working towards more how the uh, like uh, for students uh, getting the access of smartphone is very easy. So, we are targeting that uh, uh, if uh, the basic literacy on coding and AI is something if they can be taught on the smartphone, then it would be very much accessible for the students to at least start off their journey into coding and ro robotics, lowering the entry barrier for the school, uh, for the students. Uh, one of the biggest thing that we have seen is uh, while working, like when you start implementing a curriculum on, uh, on, on these topics uh, in the schools, students tend to take these topics to the home and then try to tinker on their own pro ideas on, on, on their own projects as well. So uh, having a, a device uh, or like having an application which uh, uh, which basically uh, ease the process of making projects at home on the smartphone devices is something uh, we have been working on. We have been were doing pro the work with a few government bodies as well, like we implemented this for Delhi uh, government and for Goa government as well. And it has impacted a lot of students. So, so, so that's the thing that uh, we have been uh, working on. Uh, there is one other uh, very important aspect or the challenge that we get uh, that that we are seeing right now is more from the policy making point of view. So, so uh, the the biggest challenge that uh, we have seen is like the uh, the curriculum which has been implemented or the uh, like introduced by the uh, by by the uh, the CBSE uh, especially on AI is more biased or like I would say more more having more things towards the theory part of it. Uh, and the, the practical part is something which is uh, like a bit of lagging, which basically essentially what happens is the students uh, 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 are not being able to make projects a lot. And so once the topic gets over, the concepts get over, they, they um, like tend to forget all those uh, learnings that they have done on the AI subject. So. So uh, having a lot of practical activities where the students can do like make their own uh, projects in phase detection or those things is something very important. And having this approach going from uh, like coming from the teachers, giving them giving the student exposures is also something which is very much appreciated in order to have this uh, wholesome uh, learning for the students. So so those are a few points from my side uh, uh, regarding this, uh, this discussion. 
Thank you. Thank you so much, Pankaj, for sharing your insights. Uh, of course, there are challenges, but we always come up with a solution. And that's uh, that's the productive mindset which we all have here. So uh, Dr. Timu is having some prior engagement. So before he leaves, uh, I would like to ask uh, one more question to you, sir. So uh, what are the roles of the teachers play in developing the AI ecosystem at the schools? And are they really equipped to handle it effectively? Or if not, then how can we empower educators? Uh, th thank you. Uh, it, it is a, even in a small country like Finland, it is a, it is a big job, especially with the, with the in-service training. What, what we do a lot, uh, I could point out a few things coming from Finland. There is the elements of AI, which is a, like a national program if you if you search elements of AI, it's a MOOC targeted for citizens in general, and of course the teachers as as they they want to be in 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 understanding the the world and 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 the future be, being taking that uh, MOOC a lot. We've been also organizing uh, in service teacher training uh, in general for for all the all the teachers. Uh, uh, and, and, and trying to introduce in all the different school levels and and the and the what the stu what the teachers been doing in this in-service training they've been thinking that how do they integrate the coding uh, into their subject so so we've been giving them the power to do the the kind of lesson planning themselves not saying that this is the way to teach these are the tools and these are the 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 ways you can uh, or more like teaching the, the the tool and then saying that come up with the, your projects what you can do with with your children in your own classroom and that's a very finished way of, of approaching that that we, we don't top down give lesson plans we give the tools and support for teachers to to implement their own own way in their own classroom it is a huge challenge of course, also pre 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 training is is super important. That all the all the teacher training colleges are are are, are, are updated on on this, and 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 of course our students are are very active to 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 request that too from the from the professors in in teacher training. But uh, it, it takes time and 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 a lot of effort and a lot of resources. But I think it actually takes more human resources than than money. It, it requires that there's a movement where where people see the value and and want to do it for the for the future of 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 the children. So so yeah, it, it is a big challenge, but it it should be universal and and reach every teacher in the world. If if you ask from me. And you believe uh, that it does require the dedication from our educators as well to like be consistent to learn these curriculum and integrate these curriculum in their teaching pattern. Like yeah, I, I I I kind of believe also movements, and and I'm 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 not that old, but but I have read about the about the movement of of literacy uh, projects, and it was like a national or even global movement, understanding the importance of literacy. So everybody should be able to read and write. And, and, and that's super, super, if, if we get that spirit globally, that now everybody should have uh, ability and, and, and under basic understanding on these topics, uh, I guess we can do it. But it requires more like a, like a spirit than, 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 um, than top-down uh, uh, curriculums for, for, for the teachers. Totally aligning with your thoughts, Dr. Timu. So, Ani ma'am, you would like to add anything in respect to the uh, India curriculum and the uh, uh, current scenario? Yes, uh, here also teachers are actually the crucial part of any educational ecosystem. So, it is very important to empower the teacher. One procedure that we have applied in our school and uh, even I, we have seen that what is actually beneficial for all the teachers, we are having a community of practice now if uh, suppose uh, all AI teachers or I, all IT teachers or all other teachers also 
we form a community of practice where teachers from other schools they collaborate and see for children also peer learning is actually a very good way of learning so we as a layman if we are going to learn something so we can become we can very easily teach someone else who is also at the same level so we know we know exactly what is uh, the best way to learn that topic and how to use it in the experimentally so this is a uh, something that we have tried and it had worked a lot like group teaching or group learning this thing we have tried if uh, there are four teacher they have got different expertise and they together collaborate and they teach uh, uh, the students so that they are able to create something finally and experimentally everyone is going to practice it do it so i actually i i just like to thank all of you also because stempedia has provided an lms sort of thing where the layman could very easily learn so it has actually from the scratch all the videos and the tutorials are so beautiful that it is like a hand holding you are giving and the teachers so that they are very easily they are developing the projects and helping their students to develop the projects it is an amazing task and i know it is very difficult to make those videos and how much of time and uh, labor you have done to develop those projects and it is really it works huh? it really worked it has worked and it has done to empower all the teachers it's really honor to hear all this from you miss adi ma'am uh, charlene ma'am would like to add something uh, yes so uh, before Sorry, uh, charlene, i apologize i, I, yeah, I yeah, must yeah. go now i have another commitment well, for, for okay. today so thank you thank you so much, much. we will be in touch Pro professor before you leave dr timu before yeah. you leave, i would like to let you know that i have finished that elements of ai course oh along with my students oh and these Beautiful. students have got a very good fundamental uh, um, platform to start their uh, ai journey through this course and then i would also like to request shruti if you could give our the information about this course to our viewers It, yeah. it it's a highly well structured course and uh, if anyone wants to start with their ai journey this is a d course to start with thank you professor and thank you finland thank you, thank you. happy to hear that and and I, i'm sure we will be in touch bye thank you so much thank you, thank you so much dr tidhi thank you sir. yeah Uh, Miss Charlene, ma'am, you would like uh, you were adding something to it. Uh, yeah, I yeah, I really like how uh, Miss Annie have mentioned about the integration of this and changing the these uh, emerging technologies in the curriculum. And uh, I would just like to add more than the subject experts, like their role in these uh, technologies is like the teachers or educators in general. I think the main role that we educators have to uh like advocate to our students is the responsible use of these technologies and its uh, ethical implications in the education and in the overall um field in many aspects and uh because if we have this consistency among educators like everyone is very consistent with how i i i know how uh there's a huge conversation about chat gpt and the students using it in the assessment right so there's a huge uh, conversation on that so yeah in general as educators i think our role is to advocate the responsible use of these technologies so that's the point that i would just like to add of course of course so i think uh, our educators who have joined us on youtube uh, get the got the gist from uh, the uh, aspiring words that you have shared and uh, we are getting lot of questions again and again that uh, uh, when uh, when will you when will be answering their queries and uh, where you, they supposed to give the feedback so feedback link is already there uh, you can share your feedback with us and we'll take your queries within uh, half an hour or so so i would like to ask my next question to mr pankaj uh what are the educational tools and technologies that are that can be used by the teachers to teach these concepts in a fun and engaging way if you could share your thoughts to it yeah so um uh, uh going through the questions uh, like i would just uh, uh, divided into how the technology has come down uh, in the recent time so 
So I think uh, all of this was revolutionized uh, first with, um, uh, like in the initial stage, it was more towards how the students can learn coding with C, C++. That was the norm. And then later on, when the Python came, uh, it uh, disrupted the whole thing uh, in order to like create AI machine learning. You have to learn about Python. So th that become the basic, uh, uh, like I would say, element uh, in order to learn about the basics of Python uh, as well. And then now coming towards CBSE and uh, um, I would say CBSE, ICSE, and all, all most of the boards are using Python as a base language to uh, teach students the basics of coding and AI uh, as well. So one of the biggest important thing is key uh, thing is. Uh, uh, in order to teach coding uh, at the higher grade, um, talking about going from class uh, 9 to 12th and sometimes in class 7th and 8th, Python is going to be something which uh, is going to be very critical and this is something which uh, uh, which to, uh, teachers can take up and uh, uh, introduce it to the students. Uh, what we have done is uh, we, uh, so there are a lot of uh, open uh, um, I would say open and free softwares that uh, teachers can use in order to teach it. Uh, so there is PyCharm, there is uh, uh, other application as well. What we have done is we have added it into PictoBlocks as well. So uh, now in PictoBlocks, uh, uh, the students can also uh, like uh, make their own Python program. And even uh, one of the uh, biggest achievement that we have done is uh, they can even program their robots with uh, uh, Python coding, which actually enables, uh, I would say one, uh, I would say um, enable students to use the Python learning in order to uh, like uh, uh, create the project uh, in the robotics as well. Uh, so this, this is because uh, we wanted to solve a problem that uh, uh, there are other open source hardware as well, like Arduino, but what happens is Arduino is now more like in the recent time they have introduced Python, but uh, previously it was more towards C, C++ programming that they have to done, do. So learning multiple language at the initial stages, uh, I would say uh, increases the entry barrier. So, so, so I would uh, ask uh, the teachers if uh, they focus on Python for higher grades, that would be the, the, the right uh, language to start off with. And for the lower grades, I would say from like starting from class six to eight or even going further down from class three to five, what we have seen is uh, block based coding, which was first introduced by uh, MIT Media Lab uh, with Scratch. That's that's that has now become, uh, I would say, uh, kind of a norm of uh, learning programming, how, how the students can learn programming with it. So uh, uh, the good thing is what we have. Uh, so So what we have done is. Uh, we have uh, like we already had uh, block based coding within the PictoBlocks environment. What we have done is uh, with PictoBlocks, we have uh, made it available on, available on smartphone. So now the students can basically uh, use their uh, like uh, uh, PictoBlocks in the smartphone and learn how to uh, do uh, things on uh, AI or even uh, IoT. And now we are also adding a lot more things into uh, it as well, like physics simulations and those. And uh, uh, we would be soon uh, starting to add AR and VR based applications within the PictoBlocks platform as well. So, so that are the things which uh, comes as an add-on that we provide to the students. But like as a as a as a whole, uh, for the early age student, block coding works very well. And uh, you can use Scratch, you can use PictoBlocks, you can use. Uh, other platforms as well, which provides different, uh, like uh, focusing on different things. Uh, there is uh, uh, like in, when it comes to the robotics part of it. Uh, so uh, from my perspective, uh, how we solve the problem of ro learning robotics at early stages, uh, when the students are learning about robotics, we should not challenge them uh, with multiple things at the same time. So make uh, the assembly part, make the electronics part, know about electronics, know about programming, know about all the things at the same time because it becomes challenging for them. So uh, we suggest you to take it from step-by-step -step process and uh, we will show you some uh, robot devices that we have developed at STEMpedia. But uh, like when you start teaching this to the students, you have to take it step-by-step. -step. So uh, while choosing the platform, you should be very, uh, uh, I would say, uh, conscious in terms of uh, how do you want to introduce it to the students, whether the robotics is being used as a tool to teach coding 
uh, which can be done as well uh, in order to make it more interactive or probatics is being used in order to teach assembly electronics uh, more of a, those parts so 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 that's a conscious uh, decision that the schools sh uh, should take when they introduce it uh, uh, as well so so that's it from my side thank you so much thank you so much pankaj for sharing uh, this i would totally like i totally believe that uh, the sorted platform is something which is very much required for our educators and for our students and uh, our picture blogs the curriculum of the lms uh, gives that particular uh, you know the approach for our educators and students to learn the concepts to learn ai coding and robotics in a very effective and easy learning pattern so everything is in just a one uh, plate and just people has to eat it so in a very desired pattern so thank you so much pankaj uh, i would like to request ms shardin if you would like to share anything to it uh, yeah, I, I really agree with uh, Mr. Pankaj about uh, Picto Blocks because I, you can say I'm a huge or top fan fan of that. I've been advocating uh, to educators on using this because it, it literally covers the hardware element of uh, this learning and the software, right? So if you if you want to learn about robotics, it, it the extensions are like you could use it with Lego, with Arduinos, Microbit, and all these uh, other things. In software coding, whether it's block-based or Python, it would actually cover. Uh, just one thing I would add for educators to use, especially in the higher grades, is uh, which we have been using since, I think, 2019, is the IBM Open P-Tech. Uh, it's free for educators, and they will actually give uh, to learn uh, different um, like topics in computer science, like AI, machine learning, um, like the Python programming and so on. So it's it's good for teachers and the students because they, they'll get to be certified as well. And the hands-on activities are there also. And there's a new uh, like curriculum or resource that just came, which is the AI for K-12. I think uh, some have, it's, it's in partnership with NEOM, the, the huge uh, Saudi project. So, and it's funded by the Carnegie Mellon. It actually focuses on K to 12. So if we are talking about K to 12, so all the, and it's pan-disciplinary. It's not just focusing on tech itself, but uh, on different English uh, language, music, arts, and also it's, uh, the curriculum is from K to 12. So educators can check that as well. And it is really helpful, especially for those who are not uh, subject experts because the implementation would be uh, and preparation would be easier for the educators. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Charlene. Uh, actually, I'm, I was just going through with the YouTube comments what uh, people has posted there. And uh, as a part of the Stempedia team, I'm full with the emotions that uh, after seeing that how people are you know, literally enjoying our picture blogs and Quarky in their daily routine. And they are literally learning these concepts in a very easy pattern. Thank you so much for all the people to uh, give these kind of examples from your daily life. And we would definitely answer your all the queries. Please have a patience within half an hour, for sure. So my last question I would like to ask to Mr. Ivan. Uh, so my question is, can AI replace the human teachers? And uh, how safe is the use of AI in the classroom? Uh, first question, can AI replace human teachers? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, because, uh, because AI of today is, I could say it's, uh, it hasn't reached to a, to, to a level where it could replace uh, the human values, the concern that a teacher can have for a child, uh, the love and care that, that plays a dynamic uh, role in, in, in learning process. So it's not just about delivery of uh, information or, or content. Uh, the learning process is actually a, a human process. And AI as of today uh, hasn't reached to that level. 
So my personal view is uh, teachers, mm, the, the risk is there, but then, but then for now be assured that you're not going to be replaced, but then don't be so much assured that uh, you lag behind. So we need to constantly update and upskill ourselves. And then the other concern is uh, whether AI is like going to take over the world or something like that. Uh, again, the answer is no, because, uh, because if we could accept uh, industrial revolution, if we, if we could accept machines, if we could accept the internet, if we could accept the, um, the smartphones, then we should very much be able to accept uh, AI because it is just another revolution. It is just another product that the human mind has come up with. And it's uh, for the benefit of the society in general. So uh, if we are living with human intelligence, uh, and more importantly, if we are living with human stupidity, then we should also be able to live with artificial intelligence. Uh, be assured that it is for the benefit of the society and for the world. Uh, so answer is no, AI is not going to replace the teachers as of now, and it's not going to pose a threat uh, to the humankind, to the mankind. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, sir, for sh sharing your insights. Uh, I would request uh, to Ms. Ani Ma'am to share your thoughts. Are you aligning uh, with the same concepts which uh, Ivan sir has shared? Or is there any, you know, uh, different perspective at uh, your mind? Undoubtedly, answer? teachers can never be replaced. No, not today, neither in future. Uh, because teachers not only is, are not a machine, they are uh, who are actually imparting knowledge. They have an emotional touch. The pat on the back of the student cannot be given by AI. And we as a teacher, we are actually integrating the critical thinking, the social emotional learning. We take all the all the students as different, and there is a different way to deal with each child. That cannot be done, even though whatever personalized uh, things you get with AI, but that is something that is a human being, and that cannot be. Uh, we cannot get by AI, but undoubtedly AI, if it is not used sensibly, if AI is not taken care of sensibly, if the bias in the human beings are not taken care of properly, this AI can uh, do lots of problem, can create lots of problem. So we need to think of the ways how we can use AI in a very efficient manner. We need some training, teachers should be trained and they should know how efficiently they can use it in the classroom. So that since uh, when, when calculator came, math teachers thought that, uh, everyone thought that now math teachers are of no use. So till now calculator is there and we as a teacher are there who are doing the calculation without using calculators. Similarly, AI would be there. It would be, we are getting now generative AI lots of uh, jobs are going to go away from the market but we now need prompters who are going to give the those prompts to generate the ai so it is like we as a human beings that cannot that feeling cannot be taken up by any machine even our audience uh, our educators who have joined us on youtube are aligning with your thought ani ma'am ivan sir thank you so much for sharing of course nobody like Nobody can replace teachers, never ever. Educators are the uh, essential part, I would say, as the literacy is the essential part to, you know, uh, be, uh, be a sensible human being. So yes, uh, the educators are the essential part. AI cannot replace uh, the educators, not at all. Anything, uh, Charlene ma'am or Pankaj sir, you would like to add or shall we move ahead? I just want to add uh, uh, some some things. So, so so what I have uh, learned from uh, uh, from the past uh, uh, few few years that I have been so uh, AI can be a great tool to uh, basically assist teachers in order to uh, maybe uh, plan how uh, plan or get get the information uh, about the students in a right because there is a lot of data that AI can process and maybe get a get a report which is something which uh, comes for from the from more of a perspective of i would say analytical pro approach but uh, as rightly said uh, 
uh, for students, it's very important that the uh, physical touch or physical uh, like presence or I would more more importantly say emotional uh, connection has to be maintained in order to get the things being delivered or being taught for the students. So, so that's a thing which uh, is very, very far away from it. Uh, but definitely, uh, I would uh, like teachers to actually explore the AI the tools and uh, uh, use it in their learning to, to I, I would say, to, to get better at this uh, teaching process or to, to get uh, uh, adapted, uh, adopt, uh, like adopt this technology and get uh, into this whole technological world as well. So, so, so that's a thing which can be uh, like taken. Thank you. Thank you so much, Pankaj. Uh, Suraj, uh, you would like to add anything or shall we move ahead? I think uh, let's move ahead. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, like, thank you so much, experts. Uh, people are also thanking you for sharing your insights. So that was a literally eye-opening panelist discussion we had. And I must say that it will definitely motivate our educators and the students who have joined us today. So now it's time to see how STEMpedia is helping the schools to develop an AI and robotics learning ecosystem with fun and engaging learning activities. So I would like to invite my friend, Mr. Suraj, to share about it. The stage is yours, Suraj. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Shruti. Uh, am I audible? Yeah. You are clearly audible. You just have to bit louder. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, well, uh, thank you, Shruti, for giving me this opportunity to represent Stemperia's ecosystem. Uh, dear educators, uh, we at Stemperia have developed an ecosystem that inspires, empowers students worldwide to become a lifelong learners uh, and innovators by providing accessible and engaging educational resources and tools that fosters creativity, critical thinking, and problem solving skills. Uh, our unique ecosystem consists of an AI and robotics lab for the schools. Now, it has structured curriculum along with this coding and AI platform that is Pictograph. Uh, students can learn hands-on uh, activity uh, on coding and AI using the quirky kits. Teachers are upskilled to teach students uh, through our teacher training program. There is a learning and assessment system which helps to monitor and determine the impact. And at last, students will have opportunity to showcase their talents to international competitions uh, and innovation festivals. Uh, here are the, some uh, glimpse of the students interacting in AI and robotics lab. You can see the students uh, learning AI and robotic codes using the Quarky kits. Uh, so uh, we are running this AI and robotic lab program in more than 400 schools across the globe. And still, we are counting. Uh, to run the uh, lab successfully, we provide this comprehensive curriculum uh, for students from classes 3 to classes 12, and it is aligned with the uh, national new education policy 2020 in India. Uh, this curriculum is divided into three different skills level, preparatory for classes 3 to 5, then intermediate for classes 5 to 8, and then advanced for classes 9 to 12. For preparatory classes, the curriculum mainly focuses on, uh, you know, play, this story, activity-based, uh, where students will be learning about uh, games, animation, story building, and just yes, a basic part of ML and, uh, AI and ML activities as well. In intermediate classes, uh, students dwell into uh, coding, robotics, then AI, uh, automation, industry level automation, then aligning, and all these things are aligned with CBSC and ICSC standards. Uh, in uh, advanced classes, that is for class 9 to 12, uh, it is completely on the Python programming. So whatever they have learned in the intermediate level, so that, those things are integrated in uh, integrated in text-based coding, Python, where they will be learning about computer visions, then natural language processing like Alexa, then uh, design thinking, tinkering, and much more. Uh, so uh, this is not the only thing. Uh, for the hands-on learning uh, experience, we have this digital learning content. And along with it, we have this practically activity books as well. Next, uh, we have uh, Pictoblox uh, Picto software. I guess uh, many of you are familiar with the same. Uh, it is a coding and AI learning platform that is an integral part of our ecosystem. Now, Pictoblox is one of the winners of GESS uh, Education Award in Dubai. 
Now, using CryptoBlocks, uh, students can learn, learn about the block based coding. They can do the Python programming. They can make the interactive games, program robots, AI and ML activities. Also, there is an IoT that is Internet of Things and much more. Now, what is the brain behind uh, you know, uh, this AI and robotics lab? Uh, our AI companion, Quarky, that helps learning new technologies. Uh, in an engaging and playful way. Quarky is an ideal uh, for students and the beginners, and it provides a hassle-free coding. You can program with it with a smartphone, even with a tab. In short, uh, it is a one kit with the infinite creation, seamless AI and ML integration with the Victor blocks. Using uh, this Quarky, children can explore more physical computing robots, sensor, AI, ML activities, and yes, uh, they can make the industry-level projects like self-driving car, Pick and place robot, IoT house, gardening system, and there is no limit. So, uh, one of the major uh, deliverables of this AI and robotic ecosystem is to is a complete handholding to the teachers through our teacher training program. And uh, we will be like, uh, uh, there is an upskill program for uh, upskilling of the computer existing computer science teachers, STEM faculty, and then school IT staff so that they can deliver AI and robotic education to the students. So teachers give the certification for the same. They will have access to the teaching resources, lesson plans, activity sheets, and obviously uh, there will be assignments. Uh, and uh, yes, along with that, there will be solid worksheets as well. So uh, at STEMpedia, we uh, have this uh, a learning management solution system uh, where the student can learn the class-wise curriculum and teachers can monitor as well as a system. Uh, here, uh, we regularly hold these refresher training sessions uh, for the school's teacher implementations, uh, who implements our curriculum. And this session helps to the master new skill each time and to get their doubts, uh, you know, related to why he picked blocks, even the curriculum will be clear to this time period as expert. Uh, every year, uh, we host this codeable competition, the biggest coding and AI competition. Uh, which gives a platform for students to showcase their talent and compete on an international level. Uh, I hope you got the uh, better insight of STEMpedia's AI and Robotics Lab ecosystem. Uh, let's watch this short video to have a quick recap. Today, technology has immersed into every aspect of our lives. This makes coding, AI and robotics necessary 21st century skill set for kids. Schools must act as change makers to mold these young innovators into future leaders. Introducing the Artificial Intelligence and Robotics Lab, developed by IIT alumni, a one stop destination for all your needs to impart the best coding, AI, and robotics education. We set up all new AI and Robotics Lab or upgrade your existing computer lab to incorporate coding, AI, and robotics as part of the curriculum. For classes 3 to 12, aligned with national education policy and following various education boards with books, and an all-inclusive learning management system to monitor students' progress. Our coding and AI platform, PictoBlocks, works on block-based and Python coding to empower students to program robots and AI projects with machine learning and AR-VR environment. Quarky robots and DIY kits encourage kids to think creatively and make real-life application-based projects. To make the students' learning journey successful, we upskill educators through on-site teacher development program and year-long hand-holding for efficient operations. Our lab provides endless opportunities on cutting-edge technologies like self-driving cars, home and industry automation, face detection, and many cool concepts. But it is about saving the environment. I New education policy stresses upon um, the importance of learning, coding, and other technologies. I think uh, that is very much needed to shape the future. We are empowering hundreds of schools across the globe. As rightly said by Maria Montessori, free the child's potential and you will transform him into the world.
Now, let me show you a few of the demonstration of our AI and lab activities. Uh, Vivek, can you go start sharing the screen? Yes, thank you. Uh, I hope my screen is visible to you. Yeah, it's visible. Uh, okay, so uh, I guess uh, everyone is aware about the Tesla car. But what makes those cars, you know, uh, uh, like, uh, you know, they will be running on their own? How does it work? You know, with this uh, uh, PictoBlock software and the uh, Quarky hardware, students can able to make their own self-driving car. Now, here on the uh, right-hand side, the left-hand side, you can see the PictoBlock interface, and this is the block-based coding uh, code that has been made uh, for these uh, self-driving cars. Now, when I just click on this, so you, you will be able to, uh, the camera will be pop up and all these things will be executing in the sequence and that is coding. Now, when I'll start this, you can see that the camera is getting pop up. Now, when, I'll, uh, when, uh, when there is a you know, cam uh, system uh, that uh, that's, uh, recognizes the sign and it will take decision according to it. Now, here's the box. And when I'll show this go, so you can see the car is moving forward. When I'll just show this to go left, it is going left. For the right, when I'm showing this, it is going right. So this AI, uh, this self-driving car is taking decision based on the sign that has been on the road. Now, let me show you another example of uh, AI. Uh, I guess uh, everyone uh, is uh, familiar uh, with the uh, Instagram and the Snapchat filter, right? So Instagram and Snapchat filter, uh, you know, it uh, uses the face features to determine its, uh, you know, uh, each part's location. And, uh, uh, you know, this uh, face expression detector uses the same feature of the face and it will detect the expression on your face. Now you can see uh, here is the code which is not in the block base, but it is a text based coding that is Python coding. Okay, so let me just run through this. Uh, so the same type of things you will find it on the Instagram filters, you know, which uses the same face feature. So there are 200, uh, 200 plus face features that has been, uh, you know, used uh, uh, through by this application. Now, you can see uh, now there is no expression on my face, right? So it is showing neutral. When I'll smile, so it will say happy, right? So you can say it is saying happy. When I'll be like, let's say surprised, it is saying surprised, right? So it is detecting these facial uh, features and detecting the what is the expression is on my face. So that is AI. Uh, so I guess such type of engaging activities, uh, you know, a student can learn by using this AI and ML. Uh, now, I guess uh, there are uh, so many questions. So without further ado, I would ask uh, Shubhi to take over and uh, uh, you know, uh, take the questions from the uh, audience. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you very much, Suraj, for sharing such an exciting ecosystem with us. We definitely have a gist that this Quarky is a child's best friend. And our educators definitely learn AI coding and robotics concepts in a fun and engaging learning way. I remember when I uh, firstly used, like, uh, firstly was familiar with this, uh, picture blogs and quarky. I remember that my first learning, I was literally cheerful, not from outside, from inside as well. So this picture blogs quarky, you know, makes us happy uh, in the terms of output, uh, makes uh, e each and every age group happy after seeing the output. output and uh, by doing the hands-on on the picture blogs and quarky, and even on YouTube, people sharing are their ex people sharing their experiences with the Quarky and uh, the picture blogs. And I'm very grateful to see all these comments on YouTube. And uh, we have so many queries on YouTube. And uh, we had the query regarding the curriculum, regarding the uh, process, how Stempedia is implementing the curriculum, the LMS, and everything. So I hope all the people who is connected with us on YouTube got the gist from uh, the presentation which just have shown by Mr. Pang, Mr. Suraj. So here is the time, as we promised earlier. So here's the time to answer the uh, queries from our audience. 
who have joined us on YouTube and uh, our panelists, our experts who have joined us today, they will answer uh, your queries for sure. Meanwhile, I would request again to all the participants to please share your feedback with us. When you when you share your feedback with us, then only you will get the certificates from our end, and uh, we'll email the certificates to your email to your respective email ID for sure. So I'll take one by one questions uh, from the YouTube. Let me open the comment section. Uh, yeah. So one question I can highlight here is somebody asked, most of the teachers at a school level are reluctant to adopt this change and understanding of AI. How to change that? Uh, any Anyone, um, Ani ma'am, Ivan sir, Pankaj sir, and Charlene ma'am, please give your uh, answer to this. Please provide your insights. So, Ani ma'am, you would like to provide your insight? Uh -huh, yes, actually what happens that um... Um, since it is a new subject, everyone is little scared and um, they feel that lots of knowledge and um, if um, we have a tie up with experts, industry experts and then that, um, that particular uh, that um, fear of uh, taking the subject and uh, using it uh, in the curriculum or teaching both the teachers and students for both of them, it would be easy. Even the teachers would be empowered and they can uh, use the knowledge to teach their students and students can also get excited and uh, they would also explore further because this is a subject that is something very new. So no one is expert in this. If, in real sense, everyone is now doing trying and testing. Is uh, not, Right now, we are not at that level of AI where everything we have achieved. It is Still, it is at a very lower level. So uh, like everyone needs to explore research and do it so with the help of hand holding should be there with the expert industries and all the people who have who have attained some knowledge with them and then surely that fear of uh, adapting the subject and using it and to them for the future it will be gone uh, i would like I, to add here yeah yeah so reluctance uh, is actually coming maybe it is coming from ignorance so the first thing you do is you at, at least make a start. Uh, you start acquiring the fundamentals. Then you decide whether you are going to really do it or not. Because there's a caution. Uh, if you begin, I don't think you can end. It's a, it's a wonderful and addictive journey. And then if you really want to make a start, then uh, pick the blocks and and STEMpedia learning uh, LMS is is the way to go for. Thank you, thank you so much, Ivan sir. Uh, so uh, I would like to add on one more thing. Yes. Uh, generally, what happens? Everyone thinks like Python is a very good language for starting with AI, but problem is that Python is like a core language. Now you are actually going to type the things and you get a result. But when you start with PictoBlock, or everything is like colorful. You have like color coded things are there. So it is very easy to adapt for junior kids and use it and develop projects. So it is actually going to help. And it is like a block based programming is there, which has integrated Python inside. So it is actually going to help the uh, junior kids even to develop projects because of the, those color coded, they don't need to remember all the keywords and all. And color coding would surely help them to understand what they have to do for achieving a particular result. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. It does tell your experience with the picture blocks and what Yes, Charlie and ma'am, please add your point of views. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I totally agree with uh, uh, Sir Ivan and uh, Miss Annie about uh, having a team of this. And it's really important. We uh, In school level, we have to identify champions in different fields like maybe in, in English, math, science, to work with us in delivering or creating PD sessions for the teachers. Because as uh, Sir Ivan have highlighted, uh, reluctance comes from ignorance or fear. And it's important that when we create or train teachers, we have to create resources that is less intimidating. Because as educators, we don't, as educators in general, we don't want to be like uh, flashed with something and we will end up 
all right, this is something that I'm not uh, really familiar with, which is how Stampedia is doing that. It's really, really good that the, the way we learn this is in a less intimidating manner. That's why we love using the uh, app and the resources that you have. And uh, uh, I just want to share like here in the UAE, what we are trying to do in the ministry level, which is currently in progress is we are creating a program for teachers on uh, or for educators in uh, training them to learn these emerging technologies, not just in uh, AI and robotics, but more of like blockchain and uh, AR, the metaverse and uh, so on. And it's important that you give them certificates because it adds up to their uh, PD session credits. So yeah, that's just uh, one thing that I could add along with the panelists. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am, for sharing uh, your views. And uh, it is definitely uh, beneficial for us as well, because it does tell your experience with the picture blogs and quirky. So it seems very interesting question. And I would like to request Mr. Pankaj to answer this particular query and uh, then uh, wh whoever want to answer is. So uh, can this be introduced so can uh, this be introduced in the primary level? So can coding uh, supposed to be there? So can coding be introduced at, at the primary primary level? And is it possible to get uh, the training for the arts teachers on coding? So yeah. So Parker, sir, you would like to add? So um, so that's that's a very interesting uh, question because. What we have like, uh, uh, we have been working with a lot of schools in the past year. So what we have observed that uh, um, in private schools, um, they want to do, uh, get this thing started at a very early stage uh, uh, where uh, it can be started with, in, in a lot of schools we have seen that uh, 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 it is starting from grade one. But uh, like what we what we feel right now is, uh, starting it at at a very early stage uh, uh, would uh, uh, we should be a little bit cautious about it. So grade one and two is something where they are learning the uh, basic language, mathematical skills, and those parts as well. So what we do is we uh, like uh, uh, we have been developing curriculum from class three uh, because we feel that at at that particular stage. Uh, uh, there, there is a, a lot of interest that the students also start with, and then uh, they can be a uh, little creative and uh, uh, creative with that as well. So when we are focusing off, uh, focusing on implementing these programs at a primary stage, uh, 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 what we have seen is that uh, the program should be fun. Uh, it should not burden anything with the uh, with the students on the theory part. So there is there should not be any theory part uh, being taught to the students. It should be more towards the activity uh, and the activity that they are learning uh, or doing during the class as well. Just to give you an example, uh, I would not want the students to to uh, go through the theory of uh, what the robot uh, like how the robot is. Uh, moving because of the voltage and those parts. I just want them to experience it and make the robot move with some programming part of those things. So, so uh, most major focus should be on uh, making the creativity level high for the students, giving them the exposure uh, rather than focusing on a lot of the theory parts. The other thing is uh, uh, you have to ease down the, the things for the students. So I, 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 one, very strong uh, philosophy that we take is uh, we should design a program which is for the 90% of the students or sometimes 100% of the students rather than designing a program which is only for the 10% of the students who get successful. So, so when we are designing the program for 90% uh, of the students, uh, then it's become very important that you lower the entry barrier or get the students uh, aligned through you know, to the learning as well. So implementing it at the primary stage, it would uh, we recommend that you uh, focus on more on the creative part uh, with block coding. And then uh, later on, uh, if there are some outperformers, there would be some outperformers. Encourage them to explore the, the things on their own uh, and support them. So there are a lot of competition that happens. So you can encourage them to 
take participate in the competition, make their creativity, uh, add their creativity level and innovate in uh, and create projects as well. So, so that's the thing that you can do for the primary stages uh, that, that we can do. Yes. Thank you so much, Pankaj, for sharing. So just to add to it, uh, educators do have uh, the fear that how they can learn these coding and AI robotics concepts uh, by being the art teacher, arts teacher, or English or Hindi teacher. So uh, I would uh, I would likely to tell them that uh, this these all concepts were difficult earlier, uh, just because people has to you know understand the C E C plus plus kind of languages. But now this block coding, the uh, this even the Python coding makes our life easier in terms of learning the coding concepts. So I totally believe that, uh, please, I totally re request these uh, educators that don't have that kind of fear that you can't learn these concepts because this is the kind of future and this is the basic literacy as already uh, uh, Dr. Timu has mentioned earlier. So this is a basic literacy which one should uh, kind of, you know, uh, live with it. So anything else, Ani ma'am, Charlene ma'am, Ivan, so you would like to add? Yeah, for uh, for the very, very early stage uh, children, I think one concern is the digital gadgets and the screen time exposure, which we do not want. Uh, so uh, what I would suggest is if you really want to start, then uh, you could introduce uh, uh, like logical thinking, computational thinking concepts in, in form of physical games. So we do have traditional games that the children are used to playing. But then one could also develop uh, certain games uh, where the children could uh, have logical and computational thinking concepts at the early stage. Uh, just for example, maybe a flow chart drawn on the ground and the children jump over the flow charts, uh, making decisions if else blocks. So if you really want to do it, we can do it that way. Otherwise, we would discourage uh, the screens for the young children. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ivan. So uh, I would like to take uh, one more question from the common section, uh, which is uh, the, which is to Mr. Pankaj again. So how to develop AR and VR in PictoBlocks project? So somebody <laughs> asked, yeah. So, uh, so as well, I would just uh, add that uh, PictoBlocks have gone through a lot of phases. So initially it was uh, like more towards controlling hardware. Uh, then we added AI features into it. Then we added a lot of uh, new hardware and the uh, machine learning environment as well. Uh, so uh, now we are also adding the AR and uh, VR and then uh, 3D uh, animation uh, or I would say simulation part into PictoBlocks as well. We have been developing for the last six months. Uh, and in that, uh, 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 we have made a lot of progress and uh, like in some, uh, in a few months, we would be releasing it as well. Uh, and one thing I want to share is uh, we were also uh, being part of the uh, Meta XR uh, 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 challenge that was being uh, uh, like created by MIT India. So, so we were uh, like, we are one of the four winners of the XR challenge as well. So. So, so, uh, so, so, like it uh, shows that the things that we are developing is something being recognized by the people. And uh, uh, when we will be releasing it uh, to the public for the use, uh, we would be having a lot of uh, uh, feedback and a great uh, run uh, as well. One of the important aspects that we have taken care in the uh, XR uh, or 3D XR VR uh, part is that. Uh, uh, we we have gone with our core philosophy, which is uh, we want the students to be the creator of the technology rather than just the passive user. So uh, even in the machine learning or the AI part, they are making their own projects uh, in order to learn the technology rather than just experiencing the phase detection or those things. So even in XR or even in the AR, VR or the 3D environment, the students would create their own environment. They would co code their own projects and they would be able to share it for the project with the students as uh, other peers as well. So that's the thing that we would be uh, introducing in a, uh, in some time. Uh, we are doing a lot of testing with, uh, with uh, uh, a lot of users uh, and even uh, with teachers as well. 
uh, which and and we would come some uh, with some beta pro pro programs as well uh, before releasing it. So 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 that's an update from our side. Like we would be adding uh, 3D AR VR features into PictoBlocks, which uh, we would be uh, like focusing more towards the uh, the 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 new I would say pillar being added into PictoBlocks. Thank you so much, sir, for this sharing. Our uh, already our students and educators are excited to have this particular advantage in our application. Anything, uh, Charlene, ma'am, Ani, ma'am, Ivan, sir, you would like to add with your experience? Uh, what I think, uh, like uh, teaching of uh, coding, it can start with unplugged activities and uh, slowly and steadily we can start with block coding and then finally we can go to the core programming. So that would help students not only to uh, learn in a very homely manner and uh, we actually, when we were kids, we used to play lots of Ludos and uh, snake and ladder game that is missing nowadays in our kids. They are not playing. So that um, critical thinking we were automatically getting with the, uh, by playing this board game. So we can, uh, we as a teacher or as a parent, you can, we can start uh, with, uh, st uh, with playing those board games at our home. All uh, family members can sit together and then play it. So that, that critical thinking, whatever we are thinking of uh, generating with the help of coding, that could be indirectly um, indirectly being inculcated into the kids of uh, today's because we don't know whatever we are teaching that will be actually uh, useful for them when they grow up because they need to ultimately solve the problems that we have not ever think, thought of today. So basically they need to have this critical thinking, this uh, skill they need, otherwise also they need to have the 21st century skill so that they, uh, they are able to solve the problem because nowadays kids are not, so we, uh, we uh, when we were kids, we have not seen this much of technology that we are seeing now. These kids are born with technology, so they are not solving those problems that we uh, when we were small, when we were solving. So better to give them those skills that uh, how they can solve the problems when they would grow up and how to become, uh, do wonders when in their workforce and uh, how to solve the problems. So because digital literacy is something that is uh, a need of the hour. Every child is actually aware how to use the phone, but they are not actually, uh, they are not capable of using in real sense, the coding and the AI, they are not able to do it. So they are not able to solve the problems that would they would see in the future. So they undoubtedly they are using the technology in a better manner than we use, but they don't know the actually what is required in the future. So we as a educators and as a parent, we need to think that how we can inculcate these skills in our kids. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ani Ma'am, for sharing this with us. So I think we will take probably this last question, but not the least. We will answer all the queries from uh, like in the YouTube comments as much as we can. So our last question I would like to ask to Ms. Charlene, ma'am. So here we have just a moment. So how to make sure the classroom gets an interactive session every time? Uh, well, it's you know, in classrooms, whatever we plan may not uh, happen, right? But uh, to make it more engaging or interactive is posting, uh, because if we, if we rely so much in technology, there's a huge uh, chance that some things may go on a different side of it. But it's important that we post really important questions, open-ended questions, higher order thinking questions, and questions that actually uh, give them like uh, triggers their creativity so and that makes it more uh, engaging for them and we create uh, opportunities where they can collaborate and uh, have their thoughts being uh, spoken out so in that sense even if uh, because in some schools as what we have mentioned previously we have a uh, lack of resources, right? So if we if we talk about having resources to make it more interactive, that's a different kind of, uh, uh, a different part of the learning. But yeah, it's important to develop these strategies and questioning uh, techniques to make it more uh, interactive. And importantly, collaboration. That's why 
uh, when we ask about why uh, will the teachers, uh, will the AI replace teachers? Definitely not because it's students has to collaborate with their fellow classmates. They have to create this relationship and socialization. So yes, it's important that when we plan interactive lessons, we focus on these uh, questioning and soft skills. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Charlie. So anything else uh, you would like to add, Mr. Ivan? Uh, yes, uh, if if you if we want the class to be interactive, uh, make the students a part of that learning process. Uh, uh, it should not be uh, one way traffic. And then, if it's um, topic like AI coding and robotics, of course, it it will always be interactive when you develop things along with with the child. It's not like you have created something and then now you give them stepwise instructions and they'll just follow like lamps. It should not be like that. The teacher himself or herself should also be open to learning. They should accept the fact that they are co-learners and not just uh, the, the sole harbinger or the source of knowledge. So when this uh, environment is being built in the classroom, then it's definitely going to be a very interactive class. Thank you so much, sir. I think uh, that's a kind of a great perspective that you have shared. Uh, Charlie, ma'am, you as well. And uh, we totally believe that uh, this experiential learning or this tinkering kind of thing are the ways uh, to have the interactive classrooms. So uh, by having so many failures and then we have to, you know, get, get to the uh, improvement uh, day by day. It is the interact, there lies an interaction which goes beyond day by day. Anything else, uh, Pankaj, you would like to add at last? So um, I think uh, a lot has been discussed and a lot has been uh... Uh, there, there are a lot of perspective that we have also got. So I, I, I would really like to thank all the panelists uh, and the fellow uh, panelists to to just to who have come to uh, uh, from their busy schedule and uh, have taken time to to talk about this field, which is uh, I would say still in the emerging uh, days. There are a lot of things uh, that is like there is no proven method to implement these technologies in schools. So everyone is trying to put uh, their hands on and uh, do it in their own way. So so it's very important that uh, these kind of sessions happen so that uh, there is a perspective uh, uh, being added by others uh, and uh, being learned from from the from the people who are already into their in like. Uh, within this uh, field, uh, it's something which is uh, which is very encouraging and uh, helpful for the uh, for the audience that have joined us. Thank you, thank you, everyone for for joining us. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Pankaj. Uh, moving towards the closing of this wonderful session, I would request all our uh, YouTube audience to please share your feedback. You have already shared a lot. Please share your feedback if you haven't done, and. Uh, I would like to take a moment as an opportunity to thank our respected delegates, Ms. Charlene, Mr. Ivan, Ms. Ani, and Mr. Pankaj for encouraging our audience with your inspiring words. Without your gracious presence and thoughtful insights, this successful webinar would not have been possible. And most importantly, thank you to all our educators, principals, parents, students, and everyone else for joining us for this webinar. We really appreciate your presence. We are hoping that you all have shared your valuable feedback with us. Thank you very much. What a great takeaways to remember and cherish. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.